Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup features the Seattle Pilots versus the California Angels at Anaheim Stadium. On the mound for the Pilots today is Gene Brabender, whose record is 1-0 with a 0-81 ERA. And pitching for the Angels today is Clyde Wright whose record is 0-4 with a 545 ERA. And now we've lost back-to-back -back shutouts to the Angels, the team with the worst record in the American League. And uh, we have Game 3 today. I have no idea if we'll ever score a run again. Uh, our offense has uh, dropped its team batting average down to 219. And now we're only one run uh, positive uh, between our run differential. So not great. We are on a rough go here. And uh, it's not going to get any easier as we close this series out and then head back home to face the White Sox. So um, before we face the Royals and their expansion franchise. So that'll be interesting. But we do need to wrap it up. Uh, versus the Angels today. I mentioned in the previous video that I was going to uh, get rid of all of my players uh, under 70 uh, for their overall rating. And uh, Freddie came up with a good idea. He suggested that I package all of those players up and try to trade them somewhere or at least get cash for them. And normally I would not... Uh, even bother with that. Normally I would just cut them loose. But because this is the first year in the sim, there are a lot of teams that have players who are playing every day, or at least on the major league roster, uh, that do not have uh, uh, as good of a, a rating, and maybe they could be used somewhere. So um, I'm not going to do that until the end of the month. Um, if they're not tradable, then I'm just going to dump them. We'll eat the money um, and move on with our lives. Uh, so I think overall there's three players that would qualify for this sub-70, like this John O'Donohue here. Um, we'll also have Steve Barber back in 11 days, so 10 days after uh, today's game. He'll go right back into the um, rotation. Maybe we'll dump, um, not dump, but we'll uh, put... Mudcat Grant back into the bullpen and, um, you know, make a go of it uh, with that type of rotation where it's a little bit, I feel like it's a little bit stronger. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with today's game. As always, I appreciate everyone following along, like and or subscribe to the channel. Another just quick shout out to that person who's going through and watching all of my videos uh, for the 1983 season. I think they got uh, stymied in the um, uh, 1983 season around game 130, and now they've gone to watch other uh, games in that series. So uh, thank you to whomever that is who keeps uh, watching my series here. Well, for some reason, I'm getting some serious feedback. Let me pause this for one second, and I'll be right back. You won't even know the difference. Okay, I um, like I said, I downloaded a uh, a new version of uh, to blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, I recorded a new version of my um, recording software, and there's still some things I'm I'm working on. So, nonetheless, uh, Gene Brabender is pitching today. He's uh, maybe been our best starting pitcher. Uh, so far, all of our bullpen is available as well, so that's good news. And here is our lineup versus the left-hander Clyde Wright. We're going to talk about him momentarily. Uh, Ray Euler getting another st st uh, start at a shortstop, and maybe his last. Every, every time he goes out there, it might be the last time. And you know what I did? I went back and I changed my lineup back to the original... Um, five in this order that we started the season out with. So I just kind of reverted back to the old um, lineup formation in order to 
maybe uh, recharge our offense. Um, and it's kind of hard to do when you got Ray Euler there in the eighth spot, but it was worth a go. Okay, let's go ahead and do the official Pilots lineup rundown. Batting leadoff in right field is Tommy Harper. Batting second at first base is Mike Hegan. Batting third at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting cleanup in left field is Tommy Agee. Batting fifth and catching is Jerry McNertney. Batting sixth in center field is Wayne Comer. Batting seventh at second base is Fred Stanley. And batting eighth, playing shortstop is Ray Euler, followed by the pitcher, Gene Brabender. Okay, let's take a look at Clyde Wright. We did a deep dive on him here. Uh, he was a sixth round draft pick in 1965. Again, that's the very first draft ever uh, made by Major League Baseball. Nickname is Skeeter. He was an all-star in 1970. Uh, the 1969 season, when it ended, what he did was he went to work in the offseason developing a screwball. And when he came back, for the 1970 season, he went 22 and 12 with a 2.83 ERA. He earned that All-Star game and was sixth in the Cy Young Award. In real life, in 1969, uh, he was one and eight with a 4.10 ERA. So you can see he had some work to do, uh, and uh, he came back and was an All-Star. Uh, in his very first start in Major League Baseball, this uh, 1966 season here. Uh, he threw a four-hit shutout in his very first game uh, in the majors. Uh, so he w did suffer some injuries, like a lot of players from this era did. And uh, by 1975, he was kind of on his last leg as a major league pitcher. In the offseason, he signed as a free agent uh, with the Texas Rangers, and they caught him in spring training. So he signed with the Yamayuri Giants in Japan for $50,000 and <laughs> in one of his starts that season the Japanese manager came out to the mound uh, in the sixth inning again this is a different era where pitchers were used to completing games and the manager tried to pull him from the ball game he wouldn't give the manager the ball he yelled at him on the mound turned around and fired the baseball into his own dugout and uh, as you can imagine, that kind of thing doesn't fly very <laughs> much in, uh, in uh, the Japan Baseball League. And so uh, there was a, an uprising from his teammates to get him kicked off the team. And not only his teammates, but the, um, the national media there as well. But the manager stuck up for him and uh, kept him on this team. And he became a really great pitcher late in his career uh, in Japan. In 1977, uh, Clyde Wright, Roger Rep Repos, and uh, future Boston manager Charlie Manuel, back when he was a player, all got in a fight with an East German hockey team while they were in Japan, and they got their ass kicked. Um, they got sent to the hospital um, with uh, fa facial uh, lacerations and, and bruising. Um, and uh, it wasn't long after that that Clyde Wright um, was let go by the Yamaguri Giants. The other thing of note is uh, his son, Jarrett Wright, was a, a first-round draft pick in 1994 for the Cleveland Indians. Uh, I also remember that he was the pitcher that my Detroit Tigers uh, beat up on pretty good uh, in the ALCS against the Yankees in 2006 before we went to the uh, playoffs, uh, to the World Series, I should say. So, uh, Anyway, here's Clyde Wright making his sixth start of the year, 0-4, 545 ERA, 15 Ks in 34 and two-thirds innings pitch. The Pulitzer Bank, 281 against him. Uh, his fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 48.8%. His best pitch is a slurve with a slow curve uh, just below average. Overall rated an 80, the 28-year-old lefty goes to arbitration at the end of this season. Okay, let's take a look at the defense for Anaheim. They do have a couple different players in there. 
uh, for today's game. Uh, they moved Billy Parker from second to third base where he is not good at all. That's a good bunt opportunity there for us today if we need it. And Bobby Noop will play uh, second base today. Okay, here we go. Tommy Harper leading off only batting 200 versus lefties this year. We do not hit lefties at all in this uh, sim. As Tommy Harper starts off the game with a base hit. Now, we decided Randy Brown was an 88 arm, correct? Yeah, so he's not someone that you want to steal against. And we've got a lefty on lefty here. Um, shoot. Let's hope Clyde, I mean, let's hope uh, Mike Keegan strikes out, actually, not into a double play. First pitch swinging, ground ball, the first thing it gets past. The first baseman chance, and Harper goes to third. So maybe this is our um, our uh, top of the lineup we need to stick with, no matter what. We are first and third, nobody out. We've got Rich Rollins up. He's our hit-and-run guy. He's only batting 172 versus lefties. 1-1 one, one count, and a ground ball base hit in the center field. Harper scores. That'll break our uh, scoreless streak, which I believe was right around 18 innings with those back-to-back -back shutouts. So we get off the schneid. It's first and second. Nobody out. And Tommy Agee is up. Again, another Pilots hitter that's hitting sub 200. 2-1 Two count to Agee. And a line drive to first. And Rollins gets back just in time. There's out number one. That's going to bring up our main RBI guy, Jerry McNurtney. I guess if you don't, if you get shut out <laughs> back to back games, anyone that gets an RBI is your main RBI guy. There we go. McNurtney laces it into left center field. Everybody's in. A two RBI double for McNurtney. That's going to give him 17 RBIs in 20 games. His first double of the year. So, great job there by McNurtney. Pilots are up 3 nothing here in the first. Here's Wayne Comer. 231 hitter versus lefty. So, he's a little bit better than everybody else. As Comer hits it back to the pitcher right. McNurtney was moving on the play. So, the only... Uh, option for what right is to throw it to first. Two down now. Here's Fred Stanley. McNurtney on third. Stanley, one two count. He hits a high deep fly ball to right field that dies at the wall. 345 feet. So we do get three on the board here in the first inning. We go to the bottom half. Let's take a look at the Angels lineup rundown. Betting leadoff. Playing third base today is the rookie, Billy Parker. Batting second in right field is Jay Johnstone. Batting third in center field is Tom Silverio. Batting cleanup in left field is Rick Reichert. Batting fifth at first base is Bob Chance. Batting sixth at second base is Bobby Noop. Batting seventh and catching is Randy Brown. Batting eighth at shortstop is Ruben Amaro. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Clyde Wright. Let's take a look at Gene Brabender. What a nice surprise this guy's been. Oops. Let's go. There it is. Making his third start since we moved him into the rotation. He's 1-0 with an 081 ERA, 19 Ks, and 22 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 167 against him. Almost threw that no-hitter in his first start of the year. He um, left the game with uh, eight to third innings with um, one hit. Uh, fastball tops out at 87 miles an hour. He's got four pitches, two of them above average, including the slider and a sinker. Doesn't even throw a fastball, actually. Overall rated in 82, the 27-year-old Right, he goes to arbitration at the end of the year. Okay, let's take a look at our defense. 
solid all around. Some challenges at second base with Fred Stanley. And, of course, out there in right field with Tommy Harper. Here we go. Billy Parker leading off against Gene Brabender. And he walks in. I wonder how many of our 22 games now have started off with a walk. We've walked the leadoff man. I bet you it's half at least. So Billy Parker's on first. He's got a ton of speed. McNerty's been great behind the plate this year. Let's just take a look to prove that. Well, he's thrown out 33% of the base runners, so I guess that's not huge, but at one point in his career, he'd thrown out 50%, so I think they should be careful on the base path as Jay Johnstone is the next man up. And he walks his ball. So this is how the game's going to go. Uh, I mean, when you have an 081 ERA, you're bound to get lit up. This is his... This is his game where he's going to get uh, destroyed. And then, uh, you know, he'll have a bounce back start next time. So, Tom Silverio has been batting leadoff uh, the first two games of the series. Here's in the number three spot. Striking out. So, it's all or nothing here. Strikeouts or walks. As Rick Reichert steps up. He leads the team with three home runs. Really the only guy with some real power on this team. Rated an 85. Ground ball to short. And an error by Euler. That is Euler's third error in four games. In four starts at shortstop. So there's just another reason not to keep this guy. He's supposed to be solid defensively, but... Um, I mean, when you have an overall rating of 66, um, I mean, you really can't expect anything from them. So now the bases are loaded. Brabender's already thrown 20 pitches. Now that error, if a run scores, is going to be unearned anyway. So I don't know what's going to happen here. Bases are loaded. We've got to play regular depth. I don't think we have an option. Uh, I guess we could pull the infield in, but we're up three runs. So we'll play back for the double play. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that'll get a run in. Fly ball to left. Got 91 speed at third. So, yeah, that's an under and run, but they get at least one on the board. Here's Bobby Noop. First time we're seeing him. He's one for nine on the season. And he strikes out with him, so. That was a ridiculously stupid inning. Two walks, two strikeouts, an error, and a sack fly. We go to the top of the second. When you have two terrible teams like this, I mean, if you, if you were to, like, imagine this game taking place in 1969 in real life with these terrible no-name players for the most part, um... I, was, I could imagine a 3-1 score in the first inning with errors and walks. I guess that's a, a distinct possibility. Oh, Ray Euler gets a base hit to lead off. So Euler's on first. We're going to sack bunt. They're bringing the third baseman in. Very low rating. 0-2 count. That was a good bunt from Brabender on a curveball. It does get Euler into scoring position, so Harper has a chance to get the run back for us. Runner on second. Here's Tommy Harper. Led off the game with a base hit. And a wild pitch moving Euler over. Oh, just a bunch of sloppy, sloppy play. Okay, let's um Well, let's try a sack fly of our own. Euler speed is below average, but Harper's capable of going deep. It's a fly ball to right. That's not nearly deep enough. And Jay Johnstone's got a good arm. Uh, I guess with 30% chance, we got to say no. So uh, we won't get that one. 1-1 one, one count to Hegan. And a fly ball on the... Yeah, carrying back to the outfield grass. So. Oh, an error 
Here he drops it. Come on. This is so infuriating. I, I mean, I'm glad we got the run back, but it's so stupid. Like, this would never happen. Oh, God, I swear. This game is going to be the death of me. And then a base hit. Keep the two-out rally going. There's, like, no game theory in this, built into this. I don't know. I was talking to... Um, to Dave K of Not Your Status Quo. He's one of my friends. And he plays this game as well. And I'm like, what you know, what good are the ratings? What do the ratings mean anything? Um, and then the ratings within the overall rating, what do they mean? You know, like how do they you know, like why is it you know, an eighty percent chance to go from first to third or whatever, and then you go for it and then you get thrown out you know, 90% of the time. Like, I don't I don't understand any of that stuff in this game. Is that an infield single for AG? It is. Oh, an error! No! It's unbelievable. Oh, my God. Bases are loaded. Two down. Here is Jerry McNertney. He drove in two runs in the first. Oh, man, this is so ridiculous. Here we go. 2-0 count to McNertney. Oh, it goes the other way with it. We do get one run. We leave the bases loaded and go to the bottom of the second. Randy Brown leading off. Can't find a photograph of Randy Brown. Ground ball to third. Is it an error? No, it's a ground out. You just never know. One down. That will bring up Ruben Amaro Sr. Ground ball to third. Rollins. Back to back plays. And he makes the error. There it is. I knew it was coming. You had to know it was going to happen. We're going to pull in the corners. Clyde writes up. Laying down a bunt. Back to the pitcher. Brabender. Is he going to throw it away? Oh, he does have a, a successful sacrifice. Moving Amaro into scoring position. And I, I've told you this before, but my theory is these errors and wild pitches and pass balls, it's not a random occurrence. It is something that happens because a run will be scored, you know? So, in my opinion, Billy Parker is probably going to get a base hit here. Yeah. And Amaro will score. They wouldn't happen otherwise. So, it's 4-2. to two, Another unearned run. As uh, Brabender's ERA just keeps going down despite giving up runs. And Rollins will get his, another opportunity at third, and this time... He gets the job done. So it's 4-2 to two going to the top of the third. Wayne Comer leading off. Line drive in the center field. One up. Here's Fred Stanley. Infield single from Fred Stanley. Talk about a guy that needed a hit. Stanley's been struggling. We'll let uh, Euler swing. He's going to take a walk. Look at Euler fighting for his job. Gene Brabender's already had a sacrifice today, so this is probably going to be a pop-up. Oh, maybe a strikeout. Oh, yeah, it's a pop-up. That's how it happens the second time. You never get two from one player in a game. So we knew that was going to happen. Um, just from the thousands of games I've played. And then Tommy Harper's going to walk. 61 pitches here in the third for Clyde Wright. And that sort of makes sense. I mean, I might also have walked Harper to get to a lefty, Mike Hegan. Hegan is one for two today. 1-1 one, one count. And a base hit through the left side. Stanley scores. Euler 
scores, and it's six to two. All right, well, we'll take all the runs we can get. We've seen enough to know that we're not probably going to end up winning the division. Rollins lines out to left, so we'll take a couple runs. It's now 6-2, headed to the bottom of the third. Tom Silverio leading off against Robin. And a line drive to first. Egan makes the play. One out. Um, I don't know. I think I mentioned that I was going to look for um, the Andy Messersmith uh, rookie card. They're, it's going for $5 on Mercari. And it looks like someone had crumbled it up and just totally destroyed it. So I was, I'm not going to buy that one. Um, there were other groups, like you could buy a set of the 1969 Angels team for $34. That would include um, the Andrew, Andy Messer-Smith card, but I don't want to pay that kind of money for cards I don't even want. I just want the Messer-Smith rookie. So I'm, I'm, I'm still continuing to look. A 1-2-3 inning for Brabender. We go to the top of the fourth. Tommy A.G. leading off. He's 0 for 2. Man, uh, A.G. for Mincher. That has turned out to be a really bad trade for us. As A.G. has done nothing. Average down to 204. No home runs for us. McNertney flips it to right for out number 2. And Wayne Homer Comer. Homerless Comers. Grounds out to third, so we go to the bottom of the fourth. Now everybody's pitching. So they've settled down, get the ball over the plate. Bobby Noop hits a ground ball to short. Did he get a hit? Noop. One down for Randy Brown. Line drive into left center field. Out number two, and Ruben Amaro. Will it be six in a row for Brabender? He gets us a strikeout and sets down the side. Game is finally moving along. We go to the top of the fifth. Fred Stanley leading off, followed by Euler and Brabender. Stanley gets a hold of it. Oh, it dies at the fence. 405 feet. That is right at the wall. Silverio had to throw that glove up at the last second to make the catch. One down. Here's Ray Euler having a career game. And you know what? He strikes out and he's still having a career game. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, two outs. Here is... Gene Brabender. I guess we gotta let him. Yeah, I mean he has only given up one hit. No earned runs, so we're gonna let him bat. Flips into right center field. Is that gonna get down? Ah, uh, no, it's gonna carry deep enough to be caught. So we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, and they're gonna go ahead and take out Clyde Wright for Bubba Morton. I like his name. Oh yeah, former Detroit Tiger. Look at that, he didn't get uh, to the majors until he was 29 years old. It's like primarily used as a pinch hitter. Maybe a de defensive replacement. Okay, Bubba Morton. Leading off the fifth. Ground ball up the middle. Hey, Stanley making a play. Despite being deficient there at second defensively. One out. Back to the top of the lineup. With Billy Parker, he's one for one with a walk today. And he strikes out looking. 4Ks for Brabender. Two quick outs for Jay Johnstone. He walks for the second time. It's the old strikeout-walk combination. I ex expect nothing less from this game. That's going to bring up Silverio, who's 0 for 2. And he struck out once. And a base hit the center field. 
So here's the two out rally. First and third, Rick Reichert up. 0 for 2 today. First pitch swinging. A comebacker to Brabender. And he makes the play. So good job there by Brabender getting out of the jam, going to the top of the sixth. We've got a new pitcher. It's Ed Suckla in his 11th game. 0-0 with a 2.25 ERA. Six walks, six Ks, and 12 innings pitch. Opponents are betting 250. He's got a save. No blown saves. Fastball tops out at 90 miles an hour. He is a fly ball pitcher. What is that? 66% of the time. Fastball is his best pitch. It's rated an 83. Overall, a 78. The 28-year-old righty goes to arbitration at the end of next year. Okay, Tommy Harper leading off. Let's take a look at the end game stats. There we go. Harper, one for two with a walk. And he's batting 318 versus righty, so we prefer to have him step in there versus right-handers. And a base hit back through the box into center field. Harper on first. Nine hits now for the Pilots. Mike Hegan up as a left-hander. I think he's going to be happy to see a right-hander on the mound. We'll let him take a cut. 2-2 two -two count. Oh, I thought he was going to strike out. Ground ball to third. Yeah, it's the only play was to first. I don't expect somebody with a rating that low to turn a double play. Although you never know. Here is our Rich Rollins. He's two for three today with a ribby. Chance to drive in another. Oh, he strikes out on that curveball for out number two. Which will leave it up to Tommy Agee to tack a run on. He's 0 for 3 today. And he does pop it up behind second base. There's out number 3. We go to the bottom of the 6th. 6 to 2, Seattle. Broadbender's only at 66 pitches. I think he's got at least two more innings before he's officially tired. And not if he walks, everybody. There's another walk. His fourth today. And now we have to maybe get somebody up in the bullpen. Bobby Noop up. He's 0 for 2. 2-1 two count. Oh, he gets hit in the knee. Come on. We've had pass ball, wild pitch, four walks. I mean, uh, four errors. Uh, what is that? That would be eight walks between the two pitchers. I mean, <laughs> like... Not every baseball game has every possible scenario play out. First and second. And a strikeout. So, yeah, you get the walk strikeout. The walk hit by pitch strikeout combo. Ruben Amaro and then the pitcher's up. I'd have to imagine they're going to pinch hit. Down four. That's another walk. God, this game just absolutely... Is hard to. I'm trying not to say anything bad, even though we all we all know what I'm thinking. Here's the pinch hitter. It's Billy Cowan. Wow, he's a, not a great pinch hitter, but he's awesome defensively in the outfield. Um, I mean, we just gotta play back. Maybe turn a double play. Cowan's got some good speed though, so the double play is not likely here. First pitch swinging. Ground ball into the hole. And another error by Euler. Five errors. Bases loaded. Another unearned run. Ground ball to third. Another error. Yep. Wow. Six errors. All unearned runs. <laughs> This game is about to be tied, and there's nothing we can do about it. Just got to let it happen. I mean, this there wouldn't be a walk, a hit by pitch, a walk, an error, and an error if the game was not going to be tied. So we just have to bend over and take it. Fly ball to center field. 
a Marlins, everybody tags because that's what happens in baseball. Everybody tags. Here's Silverio. One swing of the bat will give him the lead. Ground ball to first. Is it another error? Nope. So they get three runs on a bunch of horse shit. And we go to the top of the seventh. New pitcher, Jim Coates. Uh, ninth game, 0-1, 5 ERA, 5 Ks in 9 innings. Opponents are betting 206 against them. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 45.2%. Fastball is his best pitch, rated an 84. Overall, he is a 78 rated pitcher, uh, 36 years old. Goes to free agency at the end of the year. All right. Here's Jerry McNurtney leading off. He's one for three. Two RBIs. They have five runs on two hits. Unbelievable. McNurtney flips it to right for a single. Leadoff man is on. All right, uh, here's Wayne Comer. He's 0 for 3 today. We're going to pinch hit Comer for a lefty. Steve Hovley, who's better to... Gosh darn it, I did it again. I pinch hit, I pinch ran. So we'll have to bring in a... Um, Velasquez. This game has got me so flustered that I can't even think straight. Then a double play, of course. And then a hit batter, because why not? Ray Euler. Fly ball to center. So i got to fix the defense. I just screwed that all up. All right, let's see here. I guess we'll put Hovley in center. Uh, can we put Co Comer in right? Yeah, I guess that's what we'll do. I guess it'll be all right. We'll put um, Comer in right, Hovley in center. Um, oh, we need a catcher. Which is going to be Freddy Velasquez. <laughs> uh, he's got a good arm, so we're not... like That's not a, that's not a horrible thing. But when we lose, we'll know our reasons why. Reichert, line drive to center. There's one out. Bob Chance, another walk. Uh, Bobby Noop, ground ball to second. And a double play. So, Rob Bender, as you may have noticed, was listed as tired. He hit the century mark at 102 pitches. We're going to go ahead and take them out and bring in Steve Whitaker to pinch hit here for Jim Bag. <laughs> Starts out. Hey, here's Freddy Velasquez. And Mike Keegan. Going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Who are we going to pitch here? I guess it's going to be Diego Sigui. Sigui. Pitching better as of late. His 10th ball game this year. 1-0 with a 3.55 ERA. 9 Ks in 12 and 2 third innings. Opponents are batting 239. He's got to say. And you pretty much know the rest already. Overall rated only a 76. The 31-year-old righty goes to free agency in 71. Randy Brown leading off against Diego Segui. And a walk. And a 1-1 count. And it's a bunt. Play goes to second. So the sacrifice is not successful. They're going to pinch hit a guy named Jim Hicks. 
who uh, did play for the Angels in 69. As you can see, a pretty big gap there. Three years he didn't play before he got another shot in the majors with the Angels. 2-0 count. It's jammed inside by Sigi. Popping up the Oilers. You're going to get the trifecta, the hat trick of errors? I guess not. Two down. Here's Billy Parker. Parker hits a ground ball to Oilers. Another shot at it. Uh, get out of the inning. We're going to the ninth. They're going to bring in Hoyt Wilhelm, the Hall of Fame knuckleball closer. He's, wow, he's blown two saves this year already. And I believe he was injured, correct? Yeah, he was out for four days. Um, so I think he just got back. He's 46 years old. He looks like your happy grandpa. Look at that. Wearing an old trucker's hat. I don't know my grandpa did. Okay, here's uh, Rich Rollins. Two for four today. <laughs> Waits on that knuckleball, and he walks. Rollins on first. Tommy Ag, 0 for 4, full count. Striking out. <laughs> He's 0 for 5, average under 200 now. Here is Steve Hovley, runner on first. Just gets a piece of it, taps it back to Wilhelm, who goes to second. Did he throw a knuckleball to second base? Over? All right, runner on first for Wayne Comer. He's got a big O for today. And a ground ball first. We're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. We'll bring in our closer, Mike Marshall. He has not been particularly good this year. Take a look at Marshall. Ninth game. No record. 466 ERA. Six Ks in nine and two third innings. He's given up ten hits already, though. And two home runs, which is horrible. Three saves. Two blueies. And you can see here the 26-year-old righty is going to free agency. I'm sorry, arbitration. In 1970. All right, we're three outs away. How much you want to bet he's going to walk John Stone? Nope, 0 1 count. Popping it up on the infield. It's Euler looking for the hat trick and errors. Oh, he makes the catch. The drama. The drama whenever it's hit to him. One down, Tom Silverio. 1 0 count. Clobbered. The second. Out number two. We are on the verge of winning a game in which we've scored uh, six runs, created four errors, but only given up two hits. And yet we're only up a run. Rick Reichert. Line drive to center. I think Hovley's got it. Yeah, there we go. Pilots win six to five. Handshakes, butt slaps, off the stakes. These are not the kind of games I get very excited about, to be honest. It just is insulting as uh, they're thinking about whether or not there's a trade. So, let's see. Nope, there's not. Here's the standings. We jumped back over Chicago before we head home to face them. And we are now three games back of the A's, who are 15-7. and seven. That is a good team. Let's take a look at the headline news. The Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Downing fans 12. Yankees triumph over Boston. Um, Downing brought his 69 strikeout count to 49. He's got 49 strikeouts already? Holy shnikey. 49 strikeouts in six games. Look at his log. Oh, my God. He had 13 and 12, 8, 7, and 6. That is kind of impressive. Uh, no other news. Let's take a look at transactions. Anybody else getting traded? All hands on deck for Bill Hands, who suffered a wrist fracture <laughs> and will be out for five weeks for the Cubbies. 
Does he do something for them? Uh, yeah, he's a starter. And he's going to miss 40 days. So, Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. It's a victory. We'll take it. it uh, at least we put some runs on the board. And then our defense is terrible. Ray Euler will not play another game for us. Um, he's done. I'm sick of him, to be honest. Um, who is the player of the game? This is a tough call. I guess I'll give it to Jerry McNertney, who had two hits, drove in two runs. He had a double in there. Wow, two errors by Rollins and two by Euler. Gene Brabender <laughs> gives up five runs, but none were earned. His ERA is down to 061. You know he's going to get rocked. He's going to give up 11 runs or something like Jack Morris did twice in our 1983 season. Uh, this game sucks sometimes. Uh, Diego Segui, Mike Marshall got his fourth save. Uh, they did their gerbs. Clyde Wright, 0-5 on the year. Okay, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow with game one of the three-game series against the Chicago White Sox. Until then, everyone, have a great day.